Hi, my name is Jack Gunter, and I'm here today to ask you to help me to create a feature-length documentary that I'm making called The Quest for the Lost Paintings of Siberia. It's going to be a great film. It tells the story of 11 days in October of 2013, when filmmakers Jesse Culver, Ken Rowe, and I entered the Russian Federation through Beijing, China. Our mission? To locate 17 of my original paintings that have been trapped in one of Stalin's secret science cities for the last 24 years and attempt to get them back to the United States. This is not your grandmother's documentary. First of all, it's an art film. It's filled with images of many of my original paintings, plus the whimsical works of American artists Dan Haggerty and Linda Nino. And it also features the spiritual, powerful landscapes of the Russian artist Nikolai Rorik one of Siberia's national treasures. This art film also includes a televised exhibition that the Novosibirsk State Art Museum held for me in 2013 to honor my kidnapped paintings. And also a vodka-infused visit to the basement, to the catacombs of the museum, where I found that everything was for sale. Ooh la la. It's a political history film. The lost paintings were part of an American protest movement in the late 1980s, where citizens of Stanwood, Washington stood up to the expansion of SeaTac Airport, a third runway that threatened to ruin the life of a pristine Northwest town. The film also chronicles the last days of the former Soviet Union, where statues of tyrants were being toppled. People lined up for a mile for a chance at a Big Mac at the first McDonald's in Moscow and the fall of the Berlin Wall signaled the end of the Cold War. In 1989, I personally introduced the art of the yard sale to the former Soviet Union. A year later, communism fell. Coincidence or fact? In 1989, when I walked the streets of Moscow, I saw people holding hands. I saw little kids playing in the parks. I saw people walking through flea markets and wishing for a better life. And I thought, how many American missiles are aimed at this spot? Back then, we were afraid of nuclear war. The Russians were and we were. That year, I got my own nuclear missile, the top of a Polaris missile from the Bangor sub-base. Where I got it, I'm not allowed to say. I used to be afraid of nukes, but now I have one. The film also takes us to one of Stalin's secret science towns, in the year when its barbed wire gates opened and it appeared again on maps. My exhibition in the town of Akadem Gorodak, which is known as the Academic Town, was the first view of American life that many in this secret region had ever seen. And then there was the Barbie doll miracle. The film is also an adventure into the unknown. Our 2013 film crew traveled first by plane and then by car to where the roads ended and then by boat and then finally by foot to a region of Siberia never filmed or visited by Westerners. Spectacular waterfalls, dingy bars and shamanic communities became the backdrop for the search for my last missing painting. Joyless customs offices and basement payoffs were the last obstacle to the return of my paintings to the United States. Was the attempt successful? That would be telling. You can be part of this epic adventure if you help us now. My film crew needs $10,000 for post-production. We've gone to Siberia. We've made the trip. We've captured amazing footage. We just need funding for the musical score, for the editing and the sound mix, for titles and credits, and for the animation of some of my weird and wonderful art. Please assist us to bring this wonderful story to the screen. The tangible rewards, including getting a producing credit on the film and having a chance to own an original Jack Hunter painting, will be worth every penny that you pledge. Among your rewards will be the knowledge that your contribution has helped bring a heroic adventure to life. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you at the premiere.